Lights, camera, action. In a studio where local filmmakers talk to other filmmakers about the inside world of film. Cut. That's not the script. F*** it. We'll fix it in post. Do you wonder how films are produced and what really goes on behind the scenes? Well, stand by. Filmmakers Kevin Mumphrey, Victoria V.A. Jones, and Carson Hype Ferguson explaining all the details. Right here on F*** It, we will fix it in post podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whenever you're listening, I thank you for doing so. I am Kevin Mumphrey, and this is once again, f- we'll fix it in post. I'm here with my colleagues, Karsten High Ferguson. Yeah. And Victoria V.A. Jones. What's going on? Today, we're out in the Atlanta area. We're talking to cinematographer, actress, director, fellow podcaster. I- is there anything I'm missing? Because uh, you do a lot. I'm a published author. Oh. Jesus. Okay. That's a lot. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't sing, so. <laughs> but who said you can't though? You do everything else. Not me. That's that's facts. That's facts. <laughs> but she goes by the name of Lacey Doll. How are you today? I am lovely. How are you guys? Yeah, we're, okay. we're making it. We're well, making yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's it's too hot to be fall, but I'm, you know we're. I'm, I'm wait a minute, it ain't that hot. <laughs> it's gonna be ninety this week. Exactly. It ain't gonna be hundred. Oh, I was yesterday. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I you won't be doing it this week. <laughs> Well, maybe next week but uh, let's start this off with what got you interested in the world of filmmaking um, so I modeled professionally when I was in my early 20s um, but I've always um, I've always liked to write I had a I had a traumatic childhood so like writing was my way of like escapism for me um, when I got out of the military the first time I went through a period of depression and my partner at the time was like well web series are a thing right now. This is like way back in like 2014. Um, she's like, why don't you write one? And I was like, I don't I don't know how to do that. And she's like, don't worry, we'll figure it out. We'll go to YouTube University and we will Oh, like out. we all have. <laughs> yeah, and so <laughs> I did. I reached out to a friend of mine that had like a, a really successful web series. And I was like, what kind of cameras should I use? Um, I wrote a show. And it did fairly well. And I was just kind of like, okay, th- this this feels good. And I don't know, it's felt good since. Now, what was this first project that, that you write, wrote? Oh my God, how embarrassing. Um, <laughs> it's a web series called Unclassified, the series. It just followed um, a group of friends um, based out of Key West, Florida. Okay. Um, so like the writing of it, how did like, I mean, like, what kind of videos you were looking at through YouTube? Like, kind of your process of writing. Okay, there we go. Hey, I'm sorry, Lacey. Our program kicked this out. Oh, okay. So I, I had to think of what kind of characters that I wanted to display. Like, what I, what wasn't out there already. And at the time when I wrote this project, there weren't that many web series that I think maybe there were like four that people actually had watched. So um, I was like, okay, well what what type of stories aren't out there and then from there can you please go <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> from there i was like okay now how many how many friends do i have that i gotta get involved in this because none of my friends were actors they were all service members so i was like okay who would be willing to do this and i pushed my friends like would you be you know would you would you would you would you and once i had like six seven friends i was like okay now i can now I can really like form these characters. And then from there it was like, now how do I integrate all of them into one cohesive storyline? And um, I don't know what the story just, it just came out. So I wrote the entire show in like three weeks. Um, how many episodes? Uh, 10. 10 episodes in three weeks. Ooh. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know. I would be like at work in my office, not even working, not even seeing anybody. Just I would close my door, put my like busy sign on the outside of my door and I would just write like for entire days. I was so zoned in. I can't write. I don't think I can write anything that fast right now. But um, because okay. <laughs> I, I was going to ask some questions my, about that because <laughs> <laughs> I sent it to my mentor and he read it. He, he sent me some notes back and then 
I sent it to some of my friends who are like avid readers. And I was like, okay, is this story like one that would keep you guys interested? And they they sent their notes back. And, um, and then I let my potential cast read it. And they were like, okay, we like this. So the entire process I think took about a month and a half after sending it to everyone, giving them time to read it, giving them time to send their notes and then making the adjustments. And I don't know, that was the writing process. How many re rewrites did you have to do? Or was this just kind mm -hmm. of a one and done? No, no, I did like m maybe three or four, four probably. It's been a while. I've read a lot of things since then, but I think I did four, I did four rewrites because I sent it to so many people beforehand. I was nervous. I was terrified actually. So I was just like, let me make sure this is good. Let me make sure people like this. So, so was there a point to where, you know, there was like, a rewrite a rewrite and then you just stopped them and you were like no nah, we're just gonna go with this yeah um once so after i made the changes i sent it back to all the same people and i was like okay what do you guys think about this right now and no one had any like major um like major changes like no one was like this doesn't work or this doesn't work and once i got to like that point i was just kind of like okay don't touch it don't touch it don't right touch it. Just leave it <laughs> But where it is, girl, don't freak yourself out. Don't touch it. Just send it to everybody and start planning some stuff. So, yeah. Now, I kind of want to get to you as a writer because that's one thing I, I kind of struggle with and think V and VA don't really care, care to do too much writing. Oh, I, I can write. It might mm -hmm. take me forever to put yeah, it down. It's, it's going to take me a lot longer than forever. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> how do you kind of get yourself into zone for writing? It just kind of depends. If I'm feeling, if I'm feeling a little froggy, I could jump. You know, like if I'm in my creative, like if I'm just feeling like a story is just like in me, ready to come out, I could, I could literally pull out my word document on my phone, or even sometimes my notes if I don't, and just, just start writing. But if I'm not feeling that creative, but I have like a deadline to meet, um, for me, it's a matter of carving out time. So it's like, dang, I really don't want to write today. Like, I'm not feeling very creative. I'm not really feeling anything. I'm feeling kind of tired. My mind is overwork, that kind of thing. But you still have to write because you still have to, you know, get something out. I, what I do, honestly, is I'll, have you guys seen those little, um, oh my God, this is, so, okay. So those little colorful lights, like on Instagram, it's like the little strobe lights. It's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, yeah. Yes, I literally like put that that light. I literally would turn it on. I have it. I'll turn it on. I'll turn on the lights off in my house. So it's just like this like ambiance of like blue and red lights. Um, in the I'm dark. Picturing this. <laughs> go go I'll on. Put on like uh, <laughs> like slow jazz, but like at a low low volume. If it's too high, I can't focus. Um, it's like a low low volume, and I'll pour myself a glass of wine bring the bottle with me wherever I'm sitting. Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> no, it's typically like on my couch. I like to write on my couch and I'll, I'll get a blanket and I'll cuddle up on my couch and prop my laptop up. And for me, it just set the mood enough. So my mind is like, I'm, I'm able to like take my mind somewhere else. If I'm Put you in the creative. vibe. Yeah. So then I'll just be able to, I may, if I've already started writing a project, I'll just go back, reread it get myself like back in like that rhythm and then continue on from there and i typically would try to give myself like four hours like if you can make four hours then oh, you're good you can stop <laughs> so when you're yeah. when when you're writing i know for me whenever i write a script i see it in my head like word for word everything else is that the same process for you mm -hmm. yeah if i can't see it happening like let's say you know, like sometimes when you're reading something or when you're listening to something or even watching something and some time has lapsed and then you're just like, wait, what did I just, what did I just watch? Or like, what did I just read? Like, what, was I even here? Um, if I'm writing a story and I have like that moment, I will just delete everything because if it wasn't memorable enough for me, it's not going to be memorable enough for the viewers or for whomever may be reading whatever it is. And I would just leave it. Like, I, I don't even need to go back to reread it to be like, oh, that was actually good. Nope, <laughs> it wasn't good if I can't remember it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's so weird. And then I'll just start back from wherever I, I deleted it from. Huh. Is that weird? No, no. that's actually, <laughs> no, actually it's not. really good practice. <laughs> now, because um, I've heard some people, they will write um, the ending of the story 
just because they they need it they need to know how, where to stop and then they just write backwards is that something you do or you just kind of write forward um, up to yes and no i also don't do very well with like outlines my mind is like if i write the ending of something i'm constantly yes like that'll help you because it'll help you get to like get to where you're going but I don't know. I like for the story to just kind of like flow. So even if I have like an outline, that's not that's not gonna be what this is. I promise you. Like it's just <laughs> not gonna be it. Like I my mom like I'll be writing something. And I'm I'm playing it in my head, you know. So it's like I know that my outline said a person was supposed to die on this particular page, but like I'm not ready to kill her yet. Like I'm like, <laughs> not even die at all. You know, like I don't know. So sometimes for me it's a, it's too much pressure to meet the end that i had in mind when i first started writing something versus just letting the story flow the way it's going to flow naturally and letting the end be whatever it becomes so that's not a practice that i i, I practice often that is something that i've done before once maybe twice in the past but i don't do that very often it's too much pressure i don't like that was it which which aspect of film do you like more on front of the camera or behind the scenes Oh, is that a hard question? Uh, t- typically, it's not a yeah, hard question. I, I, typically, it's not I'm a hard a question. I'm an actress as well. Um, <laughs> so I do like acting. I like being in front of the camera. But I think, honestly, okay, okay, okay. If you <laughs> only do one thing. No, this okay, right. You can only do one thing, Lacey. You cannot do more than one thing. Just one thing. What do you want to do? I would. I think I would be perfectly fine with just being the person who wrote the story. And okay. not being on set at all, and then seeing how someone else brought that story to life. So, I think the most rewarding part is um, writing. I feel like you're not a person who can just do one thing, though. No, Multitask. I, I get a little bit like this is not how I saw it. <laughs> but I think, yeah, writing for me, it's like I would I would be able to write projects and let someone else bring them to life and just see like how they were able to interpret my story i think that would be really cool so you wouldn't be the the writer on set like you know what i'm saying that's not how i wrote that you know y'all need to redo that <laughs> <laughs> hey let me holler at you for a second because uh, yeah. <laughs> that was not the page 26 that i wrote <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I mean that's tough though. Like, cause it's creative or whatever, you have like, you know, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, it's your baby, right? And then like to turn that over to somebody else and be like, hey, uh, be gentle with my baby. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like, man, like, if I yo, come back here and smack your ass, <laughs> there's no shaking the baby. He's shaking the baby. You ain't supposed to do that. I mean, no, that that says a lot, though, you know, that you can actually write something and just give it to some a director and just say, hey you put this into picture form you know what i'm saying however you put it in there it's saying a lot but and she's in uh, my defense there's a lot of pre-pro so it's like <laughs> i'm not you know i wouldn't just like write something and be like there you go uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, ideally we would have already talked about it right right like, <laughs> right yeah, right. yeah. So. so you so, would be the co-director because she's also a director so i'm starting to think this didn't work out <laughs> <laughs> No, I love directing. I really, really, really do. But if I had to choose one, just like one thing, like one thing that I like the most, it really would just be writing the story. I I would be okay with, I would be okay with writing the story. I would also be okay with directing anything, but you asked me if there, that was the question. <laughs> So they, no, no, yeah, I, Kevin, they, you asked the question. They, 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 do, the they do real good with, with changing the narrative. <laughs> I, 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 get, I get that myself. I get that myself. So just keep that head on the swivel so, and you'll be straight. At the end of the day, this is my fault. That's what I'm learning. Right. Uh, <laughs> For once. Yep. Many times, more <laughs> likely. Um, but, like, what, so what got you started, like, as far as in directing? Um, Okay, so okay, so after I did my first web series, um, I moved to Atlanta. I was coming here often, anyways, for like events and stuff at the time, and um, I had a fan base here. So I was like, okay, well, I need a new place, anyways. I'm kind of transient by nature, so I was like, it's about that time for me to head out of Key West, and I I moved to Atlanta. Um, After living here for six months, I met my current spouse and um she also worked on the independent side but she does a lot of like videography right like she can write 
but her she likes to she's she's a video kind of girl right she likes video editing that's her thing that's not my thing i don't like that huh. so yeah. it, just, it just made sense but once we got together it was just like a boom of like just everything kind of coming together um we were networking a lot we were going out we were having meetings with people talking to people because we wanted to film our our own projects but we also wanted to work for other people we knew that we wanted to work in film full time so the way that you do that the best is by collaborating with a bunch of other people right right yeah. um after i think maybe two or three months we had met this guy who um operates i guess what's what would be like equivalent to like a gay male netflix and um he was like you know i'm actually looking to to bring more women onto my team um so he hired me to to help him write to, to write a story and then ended up not even putting that story out it's amazing though it's really good but it's just like i think it's too early like we still haven't found like the time for it um but then from there he was like okay i want to turn you into like the, like the best producer that you can be and he he used to teach film before he left teaching so he was like i want to turn you into the best producer that you can be um i want to be your mentor and i was like okay um so from there he was just like let me take you under my wing and let me turn you into a strong director and a strong producer and that was around 2019 or so and then since then i've just worked with so many other people um i like to learn from those who have been doing it longer than me or who have done it better than me so i've just been directing so many projects both that are ours and that are other people's for different networks and stuff like that that i don't know it's just it's just a cool thing so that's how i got into directing so you mentioned like before you went to atlanta that you kind of, that you already had a fan base in this area so and i mean that's we all trying to gain a bit of a fan base ourselves so how did you um go about gaining a fan base i didn't um <laughs> I, I wasn't prepared no it was you know because women are loyal right? right so once you can cultivate a small um female based um fan fan base they're pretty loyal and they and they they tend to support whatever you're doing right as long as it's like ethical or morally sound because we will jump ship if it's not um once i got with my so i went to school for public relations um in the earlier 2000s and so it was just kind of like okay wait so i'm doing this now okay let me let me do it serious because i don't like to do anything like can I cuss? Yes. Yes, please. I don't like to do anything like half ass. Like if I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Right. So it was like, okay, it was fun putting out these web series when we were just doing it for fun or just as something to do. But we're trying to make this our career. So, um, yes, I had started cultivating this fan base, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't initially trying. It was just, it just kind of happened. Um, after that, it was like, okay, now we need to try. So the, the the steps that we took were really just like, kind of being everywhere. Like we were just kind of like, we need to be, we need to be everywhere. <laughs> like we need to be everywhere. We need to be everywhere. People need to know us, but not know our business. And that's initially how it was, right? So like, um, everybody knew us. And then it was like, let's just take people on the journey with us. So we started a YouTube channel initially so that we could take people like on this journey of of us doing what we're doing because not a lot of couples work in film together at least like not in like the gay world so we were like uh or not back in 2018 2019 so we were like let's create a couple's youtube channel where we're taking people on these you know on these jobs and these projects with us as we're getting ready for events like let's just like show them that part of the industry and then we started to build a youtube following um and then from there, it was like, okay, now we need to translate that to our social media. So like Instagram and Facebook. And I like to be interactive with my fans. So um, something that like I started doing was just like, I'll take polls. Like what kind of stories do you guys want me to write? What do you guys want to see next? Um, and I would let them vote. And then it was like, okay, people really want to see this type of story. Let me, let, me, let me put my little thinking cap on so I can give people the kind of stories that they're wanting. And then it was, I don't know if you guys remember, but back in like 2020, 
when like Vine, Vine stars were still kind of active on Instagram, you know, post Vine, but they're active on Instagram. Right. Yeah. They started doing um, little interactive, interactive stories on Instagram. And that was like a popular thing for maybe six months. But I was like, boom, let's, let's flip this. Let's start a production channel on Instagram. And then let's put out in between projects, let's put out mini interactive series where it's because IGTV was a thing when they were really pushing IGTV. Yes. So yeah, okay, yeah. Well, they're, if they're going to give us three to five minutes, let's let's do three to five minute episodes. And then at the end, we'll let our viewers choose what happens the next week. Oh, that's that, was awesome. a, that was a struggle because we filmed everything before. <laughs> so I had to write so many different stories and then we had to film so many different stories. So there was never a delay, if that made sense. Right. So the episodes were still able to come out every week. So we... We did those for a while and then they did really well on Instagram. So we're like, well, let's just move them to YouTube because we need content anyways. And I like to monetize my life. So hey. we moved the stories after Instagram, after after our Instagram fans would vote, we would put the next, the next episode on both YouTube and Instagram. But then we would tell our YouTube base, you have to follow us on Instagram so that you can vote. And back then our Instagram was still private. So you had to follow us so that you could vote if that made sense yeah and then we put together like a promo team who were sharing all of our stories so we have all these people sharing the stories all the people like voting still open voting still open but you got to follow the page so then that would bring um our youtube fan base to instagram and then that would keep our instagram fan base engaged which is what you want to do when you're trying to build a following right you want to keep them engaged right and then from there I still wanted to make sure that, cause my spouse already had a following from like music and sports and like all this other stuff. So I'm still kind of building, I'm like trailing behind her. So from there, I still needed to make sure that like I was building myself as, as a serious writer and director because a lot of times when you look like me, people don't take you serious that way. So I started doing like um, monthly story time, like stories on my Instagram stories, right? Cause they, were, they started pushing um, IG stories. So I would let my fans, and I still do it today, not as often maybe today as I did back then, but I would let my Instagram followers write a story with me. So I would I would start a story, write a couple of paragraphs, and then I would be like, okay, so what do you guys think should happen next? And then I would take whatever they wrote, elaborate some more you know, on it, and then so what do you guys think should happen next until we finish the story? And then that brought people in as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so for one, you're you are great at marketing. Um. <laughs> so talk about um, being a female director and producer and writer. Do people take do, do people take you serious? I got to push for it. You know, um, I'm married to a woman, but she's a masculine presenting. So she's more equivalent to a man. Right. So people will take her more serious. If she comes on set and she's stern or she's not having the best day, so she's kind of like short with people, they're like, oh my gosh, she must take this so serious. If I come on set that same way, it's like, oh my God, Lacey's such a bitch. Like, I don't even know. It's just like, first of all, y'all right. my job. But um, <laughs> so I have to be more cognizant of, uh, of my approach because if I turn people away from, you know, from my attitude, from working with us, then that affects both of us. And it sucks. And, you know, I come home and I, I, I can decompress and I can talk to her about it, but there's not really anything that she could do. Um, there have been times, like I said, I worked I work for um, like a gay male Netflix. So I deal with a lot of men and I, I deal with a lot of men who don't deal with women at all. So right. I walk on set, you know, and they're like, oh, it's pretty lacy, da 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 da. And then once we're working and I'm like, no, we got things to do. I got things to do, you know. Guys have like gotten my face. Um, guys have tried to bite me. Oh man, how did that turn out? <laughs> <laughs> the other guys fought him. Um, <laughs> guys have like like i've literally had to like there was there was a time where I, I had to kick this guy off a set he was just kind of belligerent but he was getting in my face so aggressive i i literally had to like go to an office lock myself in one of the offices and i called the executive producer like this is a big man like, and i'm not about to fight with nobody i'm not doing that but he's, right. he's getting in my face like like the executive producer would have to drive to where, like from wherever he was or send his assistant or Sometimes I could say, okay, guys, we need to film this or we need to shoot this. And they'll be like, no. And then I would have to call, I, I, I've, I've had to call like the cook on set before because he was he was a man and be like, can you please tell these guys? And he would literally walk into the room and be like, all right, y'all, we gotta be da da da. And that's not even his job. And like, they would listen to him. And it's just kind of like, 
It is crazy. Yeah, it but, is. Yeah, but you that's, know. That's that's had, like that's that's breaking hierarchy though. No, because I've had yeah. to send Kevin in on several <laughs> times because I, people wouldn't listen to me. No, I, I, I get y'all and you know, you told me those stories, but I'm like, I, I, I can't imagine being on a film set, you tell me what the hierarchy is. This person is obviously in charge, and then I'm gonna be like, I ain't gonna do what you say. I don't have to listen to you, <laughs> even though everybody no. knows that you're in charge. That's stupid. They don't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was producing this. Um, I was producing this this reality show um, for this network last year. Mama D was in. She's great. I love her. And um, it's like a dance competition show. She was a judge, and I I had a seat next to the executive producer as he's looking at everything you know on the screens so that we could talk with each other. I didn't have a walkie on that day because we had too many people on set, but I was right beside him the entire day anyways, it didn't matter. Kid you not, Mama D's makeup artist, like she comes out from the back of like the makeup area and I had got up, I think to get water or I, I had to fix something or whatever, I had got up for a second. And when I came back, she was sitting in my seat next to the executive producer and I was like, that's my seat. And she was like, nah, I'm comfortable. Wow. 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 Yeah, yo, that's that's wild. Oh my that, goodness. I mean, that, that is beyond like wild right there. So yeah. so what did you do? I didn't do nothing. I looked at him and he was like, uh, go ahead, get up so she could sit down. And then she got up so I could sit down. But it's like that. I mean, I look younger than I am. Um and black don't like, crack. <laughs> Kevin back. just had a birthday. Happy birthday, old Happy man. Birthday. Oh fine. Thank you. <laughs> I, I expect that people, I've come to the conclusion that I'm gonna be fighting the battle. And so for me, it's not about how aggressive I am or how I don't need to to respond, you know, um, defensively, et cetera, et cetera. I could just take it to the person I'm supposed to take it to and let them handle it. And that's just, it just, it just makes for a smoother day. That's a sign of maturity too. Like a sign of maturity yeah. and then realizing, hey, you know, no matter what the circumstance is, like we're, we're going to handle this the appropriate way. So that's professional on your part. So I would have probably called y'all, but I don't know if y'all would have, you know, put hands on somebody. It, it, it would really have to get bad for me right. to put hands on somebody. <laughs> I mean, because I'm going like, to use my words and all this and they, they would they would really have to. It, it it would and then once I told the story, people were like, oh, you you should have been none. <laughs> like, yeah, it, throw, it, it, uh, yeah, you should have been done hit him or or something like that. Yeah, so. like that. Yeah, you should have hit him like forty seconds within that story already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I have patience, but Jesus. Yeah, they, they would be like, they were like, w where you at? <laughs> Cause I, I'm getting mad right now. I'm getting Honestly, mad right I got, now. I got a little mad at some of her <laughs> stories. <laughs> so um. What was I going? That's a lot. What was I going? <laughs> no, you you know you know honestly like in in you you brought that up and like I've been I you know because I'm so cognizant or whatever I've been on sets and I'd be like the director's busy. Let me let me give this to this person that's not as busy and it's not as I'm like I'm like hey I just noticed a continuity error and I I just want to make sure I gave it to you you know so you can right and you know yeah. say it discreetly low all that stuff because it, it ain't everybody's business yeah they be like oh thank you. And then they go right to the director. And the director be like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, well, uh, there's a chain of command. There's a hierarchy. You know, I'm, I'm not supposed to do that. I mean, yeah, but, I, I, I but you know what I'm saying. Be like, hey, bro. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys feel like the hierarchy kind of thing, like the, like the, the chain of command thing, it used to be so like, no, you can't talk to this person directly. Now it's kind of like breaking like. I think, that, I, think, I think that's society though in general yeah. like a lot of people are like breaking down the things but i'm like we, especially film and and certain stuff we need to still have a certain amount of structure like it can't be so yeah. casual that i can be like uh like get the executive producer online and be like hey uh i know you funded this film that we're not done yet <laughs> i need some money bro <laughs> i need some <laughs> i need some money <laughs> I'm like yo, like that's, oh. that's, not, that's not that's not a good look. That's a terrible I will, look. I will, I will call that. I will say I need some money. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not during the production, right? Hopefully right. not during the production. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I will. I will literally pause production. I will literally like, especially like on reality shows. Oh, you always need more money. Like, I will, <laughs> okay, y'all, pause one second. Hold on, let me walk away. I need some money. I need some money. But okay, right now, so I'm, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because I was always kind of given the inclination that kind of with the popularity of reality shows part of part of it because they were cheaper to make it depends on the type that you're, that you're making so i've done i've done a plethora of different types of reality shows and the ones that require the most money or the ones that people think that they have a budget for and then they realize oh crap i don't are the dating shows oh really no is, yeah because you got to go on dates and stuff so here's the thing so okay uh something that i faced uh i was filming a dating show out of um Tampa, Destin, somewhere in South Florida, last year, the year before last. Um, I was just, I was the assistant uh, producer, but the actual producer, she had already planned out pretty much all the dates. Problem was, um, so we got, we, you know, we got the green light for specific dates. We we did everything we were supposed to do, but then the weather was bad. Mm. So then we had to oh. rethink the dates that they had, that these guys had to go on. And then it was like your, your last minute calling other places. You're trying to see if you could film other places. Other places are like, oh, sure, but I need a deposit. Some places are like, yeah, you could film, but it won't be free, like, et cetera, et cetera. So you think that you you already have it planned out. Right. You're going to need some more money. You're going to need some more money. Or like reality shows keep their cast intoxicated. So, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we hide liquor around the house, right? So like, we, like we literally, you know, the little like bread warmer on the stove, like the, the very bottom shelf, we'll hide bottles down there. Like it'll just be nothing but bottles, but the cast never look there. So we know if we need to get them drunk, we could just grab a bottle real quick, you know, while everyone's outside or something, we don't got to leave. So we were filming this reality show or this, yeah, this reality show out of Miami a couple years ago. And I think the guys had figured, they figured it out that we were like hiding bottles around the house, like in these places that they weren't really supposed to be looking. And they drank all of the liquor and we're at the crew house. So we didn't know, you know, they, they had, they, they were throwing actual parties like when we weren't there. Like they literally hitting people up. It was just, it was, it was, wow. it was, it was the worst show I had ever, it was a mess, but they drank all the liquor. So then we had to go back to the liquor store to restock because we still have like a week and a half or something left to film. <laughs> and we're filming men. So it's not like you just have like a couple of bottles of wine. No, you gotta no. have real liquor. You gotta have <laughs> brown. No, just, just take the food away. Just take the food away. <laughs> they, they really gonna be thrown <laughs> off here. What you mean? Just take the food away or whatever. <laughs> they don't care. If somebody, If somebody's flying in, but like let's say that the airport loses their luggage, you're you're probably gonna have to now go get them clothes because they're gonna need clothes to film, right? So you gotta right. you have to budget for the things that you don't think that you have to budget for. And a lot of time people don't. So yeah, I'm quick to call and be like, I need some money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you know what? That that's different. That's different. I, I was I was talking about like if you you know call and like be like, hey, I need some money for this other project, even though we're oh. not done with this uh. current project. So that that that, that is definitely different. And yeah. I wouldn't look down on that. You got me really rethinking how the bachelor works. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly they're just like, we're going to Rome. <laughs> like, no, it, it, and then you got to call and be like, yo, we got Brooklyn money. Like, yeah. <laughs> who it's told you? If, you? if you watch like Atlanta Housewives, I think that they do this like the most, where these girls will be trying to plan these elaborate trips, but then they end up taking a bus to Savannah. Huh. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna get on a bus and go right down the street. <laughs> I was just imagining the crew like, "What the hell y'all think y'all?" Doing? <laughs> look, I, look, I'm gonna tell you right now that bus trip ain't pleasant. So they they probably do have to be uh, inebriated. I tell you what, that bus terminal will be exciting though. Like you could do a uh, you could do a reality TV show on just a bus terminal. Just set up some cameras. That's with a lot of liquor on there, though. Hey, I don't think you need liquor, liquor. Bus, terminal. bus terminal. You just set the camera up. <laughs> yeah, just set the camera up. Like, yeah. hey, actually, as a matter of fact, just put like security cameras up <laughs> and put like a little overlay, and it'll be like bait car. It'll look like bait car. So, <laughs> man, you have really got me. You really destroyed me. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, when people say stuff to me, I picture it in my head. <laughs> I don't like what I'm seeing right now. So, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> a birth ter uh, reality show bus terminal. 
just Nashville yeah. alone, uh, oh, that no. could be a nightmare. Like, look, oh my look, goodness. Look, look, I, I decided I was going to be uh, uh, inexpensive. I'm not going to say cheap. <laughs> I, I decided I was going to be inexpensive. And like I knew I had to come back here like from Texas. And I was like, well, I'll get a bus. That way I don't have to drive my car twice. Oh, you get a bus. And I was like, man, I took the Greyhound from Abilene, Texas to Nashville, Tennessee. Greyhound. And oh my goodness. And on, and on the way back. This dude was tell, talking to the bus driver because the bus driver, I guess, copped the attitude with the dude. Yeah, of course. My man said, "Hey, you want to come out here and get this Mike Tyson?" <laughs> <laughs> and then my man chased the bus driver around the bus terminal. He wait, chased this, him. Wait, and the, the dude on was your like, trip? Like, no, like, yes, it was a bus driver. And you for didn't me take to go your back phone home. out and like picture or uh, film it or nothing. I don't know why I did. That is a I, skit. I, I was like, I was, I was in awe that's of the next, situation. That's our next like, Nashville and, film, right there. And, 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 you know, and this is this is before like this, this is before like everybody started like yelling "World Star" like crazy. But, oh, okay. but, but I'm like, but I'm like, the fact that I didn't pull out my phone, the, the fact that I didn't pull out my phone, I was just like, wow. I was like, I, was like, I didn't pull out. <laughs> to how old are you? What? <laughs> Man, hey, chill out with that, man. Chill out with that. You you talked about before World Star. <laughs> well, I said I said before I said I said before everybody started yelling World Star. Before everybody started yelling World Star. Wait, hold on. <laughs> what? What? Anyways, because that ain't make you, you no, telling your cause, age. No, because you know, like when the incidents happen, okay. people be like, "World Star, World uh, Star." That was a long time ago. I was like, <laughs> "Hey, look, look, look!" You telling yeah. your age, and you told you telling on yourself. We didn't. Well, Kevin asked you that question. About, no, she asked. I just reiter- reiterated the question. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Look, look, what VA said before: black don't crack. <laughs> so I just hey, leave it there. I leave it there. We all don't look our age, so that's I, what I'm saying. I for damn sure don't. Yeah, yeah. You know what Everybody I'm saying. Be- I'm 39 and everybody been staring at me all week. So it's okay, Kevin. Oh no, I'm totally Did fine with it. Oh yeah, because every time I tell them the age, I go, "Yeah, I'm 39." You're about to be 40. Yes, I'm about to be 40 in a year. It's, it's, it's a, a different. For it, it's a different 40. It's a oh, different 40. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fine wine 40. Oh, okay, I, like I got you. I mean, yeah. you're only like a week older than me. So what's up? Yo, oh, chill. So you're about to be 40. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I don't even know how to react to that. Now I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to be I'm about to be 39. I'm about to be 39. Oh, I mean, I like guess. in a year I'll be 40. Uh, a, a year from she just threw that 40 right at you. Man. Yeah, she hit me in the face with it. She's like, ah, Charlie Murphy. Okay, you know what? Today, 40 year olds don't even look 30. But no. when I, but I'm confused. Because <laughs> in the 70s and the 80s, 25 year olds look 60. So I'm trying to figure out like, <laughs> at what true. point the black stop cracking. Cause they look <laughs> I don't know. It's I, some in the water. <laughs> Some in the water, some, some, well, especially in the Memphis water. You know, it's okay, not Jackson Ke- water. Kevin and myself grew up on Memphis water, so <laughs> it's some. I in love the- Memphis. You love yeah, Memphis? That's, that's the first I I've heard that. that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wait. You you went to U of M? I couldn't afford yeah, that place. Yeah, when I was getting my public relations degree. So how many years did you spend in Memphis? Like the whole four, five. How- no, I was already a transfer student. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, um, I liked it. I didn't you, you got your degree in dip, is what I'm <laughs> <laughs> No, well, I was engaged, so my my partner went somewhere else. So I followed, but I would have stayed in Memphis. I really liked it. I didn't. I didn't that is it. the it's first beautiful. time that I have ever Memphis heard somebody say that they like, and we in Wait, Nashville. It, it, was your partner from Memphis? No, not at all. Not even a little bit. Oh, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, I think they get a lot of flack because you know crime in first forty eight and stuff like that. But the city itself, like, is 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 lovely. I will say it. Memphis is very talented. Bunch of talent. You can take that however you want it. I don't. I don't. Very really talented. Know. As far as anything. that could be taking all kinds of ways. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> uh, Why did you? I am trying to talk I'm about talent. She thought the same thing. <laughs> Thought the same thing. <laughs> look, look, I, I, look. This y'all talking about y'all city, so. and we're not in our city. So what does that tell you? <laughs> I hate it. Uh. I need some really, really, really fine police officers. I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, ain't, I ain't never heard nobody talk about fine police officers in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. 
<laughs> I don't think I have neither. Some of them girls be wearing the uniforms the right way. Like I don't know what y'all saw, but I saw it. <laughs> I, I just saw them with guns, and I just mind my business. Everybody in Memphis got a gun. Everybody. I know. That's why I did a lot of minding my own business. Everybody. A lot of it. I just realized my a family member. I ain't gonna say who it is. <laughs> I just realized a family member carries a gun, and I said, "Where you get a gun from?" And I was like, "Oh, my my dad taught me how to shoot." I'm like, yeah. "Okay, I got you." I mean, it's a constitutional carry. Are. It's a constitutional carry state, so I yeah. know well, now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's get back to you, Lacey. Uh, oh, let, let's guns. talk about uh, <laughs> that Memphis just threw me off. I ain't never heard somebody <laughs> say that like Memphis. It's like that's crazy to me, man. <laughs> I enjoy that. V is like, oh, Memphis is very lovely. What? <laughs> It is sad that that was our reaction. <laughs> that was my experience. It was I'm not gonna lie, you f***ed me up with that too. <laughs> so I have to ask you: Did you did you live on campus or did you live off of campus? Um, I lived off campus. I went to U of M when I got out of the military the first time. Um, so. So you did you live far from the campus or did you live like close to the campus? No, uh, it's really expensive that area that the campus is in. So yes. I definitely didn't live there. I lived um, up north near C- Cordova, but I don't remember. Oh, the name that's of the why name you like there. Memphis. Oh, I, I, was, I, was, I was like, I was, I was like, oh, when she said north. I was thinking I was like, Orange oh, Mound. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, um, I was saying, oh, she's been in the city. That's why you like Memphis. <laughs> oh. Really, really quick question: What branch? Navy. Okay. Okay. Air Force. Yeah, I okay. worked in I worked in law um, in the Navy. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Jag, right? Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Now, while we're on the subject of military, like, what would what did you take from your time in the military that you kind of use for filmmaking? Hurry up and wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I want to make sure. Okay. So one of the, so you know when you enter the military, typically you enter from your teens and you're thrown into a high stress job with a lot of other teens, some of which who have never even left their small communities. So you really have to learn how to work with other people. You really have to also learn that just because someone is a specific way doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you need to have an attitude with them or try to fight them. Because when you're in the military and you're working beside a a person that you know, hands down is a racist, right? you still have to protect that person and expect that that person will protect you as well. You come into the civilian world and it's like, a person wants to quit their job because they don't like their coworker or they don't wanna go to a specific party or I can't go to this event because that person is there. It's so childish to me that that's the mindset that so many people have or I can't get this job done because this person might be that way and you're offended. You're offended by their actual real personality because you don't like it. That's, to me, that's so weird. Like, I take people for who and how they are, not the expectation that I have that that they should be something different. And I also, uh, my level of patience is just pretty extended, you know what I mean? And I I definitely took that from from having been in the military and having such a high stress job and working with the kind of people that tend to join the military. Patience is key. Yeah. So it makes dealing with um, actors a lot more manageable. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, have you ever had like a difficult actor that just was like horrible? You don't have to say their name, but yeah. But if you I, do I say their name, a, yeah. <laughs> no, I won't. But I cast a YouTuber who was a pretty big name YouTuber for a movie a couple years ago. She was like, "Hey, I really want to get into acting. Um, what you got for me?" And I was like, "Actually, I want to write a scary story. So you want to be like in that kind of story?" And I wrote her character as herself, and. She read the script. We did so many table reads. She she was one of the first people who actually read the script. Like, but people think that people they look at the end product and they think that acting is easy or like film is easy or but it takes a lot. You like you 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 got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to stay ready. It's not it's not fun and games when I'm investing my freaking money. Man, so, what? Say that she again. Said that with base. Say it again. Want to be influencers? <laughs> Those are the worst people to work with because they want the fame that comes with doing whatever this is, but they don't know how to put in the actual work for it. They don't want to learn. That too. And they don't. 
Yeah. So those are always the worst people, honestly, that I've ever. She people men- don't get it, man. She mentally went back there too for a second. I, could, I, I saw I, I the annoyance it. in your eyes. I no, feel when it. She touched, she when, so when, mad. when she I touched your temple. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. When I'm she like, touched your temple with both, you fingers. took a, you took us all back <laughs> there man. with you. Man, I didn't even know what the person is, and I was somewhat annoyed. Oh my people, but people don't get it though, especially if you're a producer. Cause you know We play all these hats Put all these hats on Director, producer Cinematographer Whatever But They don't get it When you're spending your money When I'm taking money Out of my pocket To make this film work And they're wasting your time Like that is Renting space Right Renting space people Who have Like Like bro My god Like just Oh my god Hell yeah She went right back there Oh It was just the I fired everybody on that <laughs> I'm not lying. I it was a last day of the term. I said I don't even care at this point. All y'all can go. That's it. I'm done. I fired everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, she said everybody gets. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm not kidding. I'm really oh, which, I did you walk on set and it was like everybody, everybody get out? Or did uh, I walked off set? Oh. And for me. For me to walk off my own set, it took a lot, and I, I couldn't make myself walk back on set for a good while. I think like I, I was, I was, I had to muster up the like the energy, and then by the time I came back inside, I was just kind of like, "You're all dead you to me." You guys don't don't deserve this opportunity. <laughs> so, I'm good, and they were so mad, and they, they were like, "You're so smug about it," because I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, so I, I, they were like trying to talk to me. Don't talk to me. I'm done. I'm good. Everybody go to sleep. I don't care. Wake up. Get the out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. I feel it. Like, okay. Oh, I, I, like, I so was, feel this. So we just, we had to rent all this stuff. Da, 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 da. It, was a, it was literally the last day. And she was like, Oh, it was the last day. <laughs> it was the last day. I said, no, they're, no, 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 they're fired. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> They're fired. This is a loss. Chuck is lost. Give them their little paychecks. Let them leave. I don't care. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. And then a year later, we we recast it and we refilmed the movie. But that's what you got to do. Oh, my. fire everybody just, and recast. That's the most boss Just thing I've heard it. anyone say on this podcast. I fired everybody. <laughs> everybody. Because I'm imagining they're going. I don't need any of you here anymore. <laughs> None of I you. did. There was a girl who had to like the light flickering. She got fired. Everybody got fired. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! The guy with the broom, you can go. She, she didn't even give like a, she didn't even give the one person like just doing the like the job well. She didn't even give him a chance. Nah. She's no. like she's like nobody no, I'm not. was doing a good job. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is there any behind the scene footage of you just coming up? <laughs> 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 it being like, there's a lot. The the so, so we had somebody on set doing behind the scenes because we have put so much into this movie and so much into promo. We're using like YouTubers and people with big names, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, there's a girl who literally has the footage of when I fired everybody, and my recollection was different. Like I was like, I didn't yell at you. And I was like, I did me, and she was like, I got the footage. So everybody like. Everybody came over one day because they were upset. They were like, they were like, you yelled at me, and I was like, and you, you did, like, oh my god. So she was like, I got the footage, and so she plays the footage, and literally she just pushes play, and it's just like me going off on everybody, and I'm like, oh, well, my bad, but y'all still fired. <laughs> my, my bad, but y'all, actually no, that is the most boss thing I've heard anyone say. On this podcast. Yeah, my bad, but my bad. Yeah, y'all fired. You're still anyway. fired. <laughs> Yeah, That's like so I never, I never heard that combination of words again. I don't, it just sounds amazing. <laughs> you should make that a T-shirt. Yeah, my bad, my bad. You're still fired. Or no, I just used to. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have it on your YouTube because that's amazing footage to have. Just to let you know what I'm capable of. Mm. <laughs> no, I, I, I may sound sweet, I, but I'm not. Those I, are the worst people to work with. I, if I meet people now, like YouTubers or like I guess TikTokers, and they be like, "Oh, I want to do." It's gonna be a no for me. I'm sorry. It's, it's <laughs> like after you've worked with other people, then we can have this conversation. But I will never be the person ever again in my life. I will never be the person to give an influencer their their first opportunity. I can't. 
I can't and I won't because they don't. They're not serious. You, you know, like I, they couldn't be a lead for me, especially if they didn't take any acting classes or, or like take any efforts to do anything. Because I'm like, uh, I don't know. Oh my goodness! Don't. I'm just imagining her looking at resumes and one says influence. Oh, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, no, not again. Burn it. I do. <laughs> 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 not I, again. I, 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 it's a strict. I have a zero tolerance policy. Like it's gonna be a no. <laughs> the word influencer should not be written anywhere on there. <laughs> no, it's YouTubers, influencers, TikTokers, like those kind of people. Because I feel like they want to get into acting because, like the the just so that they can say that they did it. So just so that they can have some some other footage or, you know, some other video or some, some other content, subject, you know? Right. And it's just, for me, that's cool. Do you, but just, I I will never be the person to get Not even as an extra? Video. No. Because <laughs> I'd be late. Because I'd be late. And that was when I, like, when I tell you all these people got fired. This girl had one job. Her job was to pull up. She was the person who didn't show up to the trip, so she survived, right? That was her role. Five, five, five minutes, five minutes in the movie. Was she there? No. Like, oh, and then she hit me with the, well, maybe we could film my scene on a different day. I'll kill you. Like, I. I <laughs> so, so what you're saying is she didn't survive. <laughs> no one. <laughs> she literally no. did a Jason slaughter. <laughs> slaughtered the whole cast. So this is a different type of horror film. <laughs> it's, yeah, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, this uh, film was a horror film. Yeah. Did you, yes. you get that the first time? I, I'm so it past that movie. point. <laughs> it was a horror film, man. Oh God! Flasher. <laughs> oh, your your worst experience was a horror film. It, no, that's facts. I fired everybody. Nobody survived that purge. I think we kept, <laughs> <The purge? laughs> we kept two of the actors. That was it. And I don't think oh, you you're sure to, about that. You, you still had to think. <laughs> you had to think on that. They came to me afterwards, and they they were just like, "Don't we really want this?" Da, 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 da. And I was just like, "Y'all going to do better." Like, so we kept two. <laughs> like, like, oh, really? Be like, okay, you can play the janitor. <laughs> I mean, I say pull up. You better pull up. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Oh. I, I think we've all that, learned something. That's worse than my experience on my latest film. That is film. definitely that is so. Uh, you, she definitely you just beat you. That. Yeah, she, she def- beat me. You 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 top that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I'll use an influencer. For <laughs> they have weird expectations too. Like, who am I? You think I'm Disney? Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> Like what's wrong with you people? Oh God! I, I, so ironically, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> what about Disney? No, this, <laughs> the, um, just people asking for um, more more than the set set requires. Or what do you mean? Asking, having a bigger picture than like, oh, we want these grand explosions or this massive fight scene. Like, dude, we oh, this is this, smack this, this get not out in the here. budget. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of not in the budget stuff is being asked for. <laughs> I, I was just recently, and this wasn't my project. It was a project that I was I was in. I was casted as an actress, but um, I was recently in LA for a month in, of August filming this movie, and the main star was she's a a famous TikToker, right? And she had done like acting classes and stuff like that, so she like her acting was, was good, but she would never been in anything before. So it's a it's a small budget. The problem was the executive producer, she pitched this like as if she was gonna have a huge budget, I think to entice people. And so everyone believed her, right? So some of us, we flew, we flew there, I drove, I took a little road trip, I drove, um, but I'm from Southern California, so I, I wanted to have access to my car so I could see my family. But the main star, who's a TikToker, she wanted to be flown first class, only Delta. If not Delta, then American Airlines. If not Delta or American Airlines, uh, she wasn't gonna fly in on a particular day. Don't get her um, Spirit or JetBlue. The girl ended up flying Spirit. Anyway, then she oh. wanted she wanted um, her own hotel, like a like a full suite. Um, a full suite. Oh, a full yes. suite. And then she. We were supposed to, so everybody, we were staying in hotels and then we were supposed to move into like a larger house um, a few days after that. She she wanted a rental, no, she didn't want a rental. She wanted a, a, 
a personal car, like like a driver, like somebody who's gonna drive her around everywhere that she needed to go for the entire month that we we're gonna be there. She Beyonce, ain't um, yeah. So <laughs> no, she ain't. No, I'm, she I'm, also expected that they I mean. were gonna be providing her wardrobe, so she literally brought <laughs> no clothes for the movie, none. What? She brought a little tiny suitcase, a little tiny suitcase, <laughs> um, with her for a month in LA, and was like, well. If I was on a bigger budget, then they would they would provide my entire wardrobe. Why should I be providing my own wardrobe? I'm not did it. It was just it was just crazy. Like <laughs> it's not. I understand she thought that because the executive producer reached out to to her personally and was like, I really want you in this, and I'm gonna make this worth your while. And I'm gonna da 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 da. But the reality, you know, and I was trying to explain to her like you're you and she was upset. Like she was angry, cussing out the executive producer, calling her out of her name, screaming at this woman on the phone. Like it it was crazy. Um, and I, you know, I was telling her like I can understand your frustration, but you also have to be realistic. This woman, yes, she got a distribution deal. They gave her a little budget, but it's her. It's a little budget that has to go into everything. Yeah. Renting out locations, audio, camera. Those things are more important than making sure you have a wardrobe. Yeah. Like, like what? In a suite. Right. It was in a suite. It's a lot. And in a she car. Raised hell. She raised hell. And then she was like, what is she going to do? Fire me? I'm the star. I'm the star. Well, she fired her. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I was about to say, fired. you would have done it. <laughs> Fact. I would have oh, never casted her because, no, she's a TikToker. She don't know. Uh, this- <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned of today. If you have TikTok. No TikTok, no, none of that. In- you Social media influencer of anything. No, I, I could do it as long as they ain't the star. He, he says Even that now. Straight up with no, no, I'll be, I'll be like, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know what the deal is. I'm like, you gonna be out of here. You gonna be out of here. Hey, yeah. we, we gonna get you that greyhound. <laughs> the greyhound. <laughs> we gonna get you out of here. If I could just straight up, you should be good. But yeah. a lot of times, people feel like they have to say so much just to get them in their projects mm-hmm. and stuff like that that they just and then their egos are already inflated because mm-hmm. they're famous, you know, and that's just like. You're poor. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I know how much you can be paid. Shut uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You, you do not make with your follower count. So this, 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 this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my, oh my goodness. I feel like I, you're a wealth of stories. You, you, I, I didn't think we were going to get all this. I, I didn't either. I was, <laughs> we were so glad. From, from Memphis to firing people on set. I think you got there from right. Memphis. I think they came out of you from Memphis. I think that's that's where that firing on set came out. That Memphis. How many ever years? you? She played some Dolph and said, let's go. <laughs> some Dolph, money bag, who at 3-6. This sh- like is today. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. I don't but like that. Uh, <laughs> oh, we definitely learned that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Is, do not let the smile fool you. <laughs> <laughs> we should call you Machine Gun Lacy. Machine Gun. What? Machine Gun Lacy. Just every, everybody goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> okay, Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> You got the you got the firing gun. You got the firing gun. I thought you were meaning as the rapper. I'm like, why would you do that? No, 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 not rapper. Oh, but I mean, you do everything you else. Can you rap? No, you probably could. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, everybody who has been in Memphis claim they a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it, Kevin like, could probably rap. I mean, oh, I, I used mean, to rap when I was a teenager. See, you know that? Yo, but that, that like <laughs> just yeah. be, being a rapper is not a big thing now. That's not like a high achievement anymore. I'm trying to tell you, I'm gonna put out an album, no, a song. I'm gonna put out a song, <laughs> singing, <laughs> rapping my ABCs behind a beat, a trap beat, and then it's gonna go viral. I'm trying to tell you, and the only thing I'm be doing, the only thing I'm be doing is rapping my ABCs. That's it. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Right now, did you guys see the video? Of the, there's a Caucasian girl. She's going viral right now. Oh, yes. that one that was yes. in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, yes. She she had what? Big Boy on the on the uh, the the, uh, like, the mural. <laughs> like, she had the mural behind her with Big Boy. Period. Yes. Wait. I ain't gonna do the whole yeah. thing. What? I ain't gonna do it. Kevin ain't seen it. Oh, Kevin, you, and, and the all thing right. is, like, all these people are making remixes of it. So they they they, 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 they right they, beside them, and then she starts off, and then once she has this long pause, they do their their rap in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the what's the what's the uh Jesus? What's the uh twins? Twins. The, the uh, they're not twins. Chloe. Yes, yes. Chloe just Chloe. did one. I reposted it I'm, this morning because I yeah. saw it I'm this af- morning. I'm afraid to look this up now. 
the the I thought y'all talking about the like all the rap girls. She, the she, girl she, was she, like, she was, uh, she, I thought I thought I was feeling you. Oh, and I'm not gonna say the rest because no, not that one. No, oh, not she, that one. This is totally different. She, she, she was even <laughs> telling people that most people in Atlanta ain't from Atlanta. Who are you talking about? That that know. same one. She she had like a line That's in her? there where she she made a mention of that because she had the braids, right? No. We're talking no, about the wrong that, person. That's a different girl. That's oh, a different okay. girl. All right, all right. All right, my bad. I can't keep up. I can't keep up with all the stuff either. that's coming out here. No, nah, I'll show it to you guys. Okay. Before. All right, all right. We, we can't play it on here no, because no, we're no, not paying definitely. anybody. Yeah, definitely not. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 So, Kevin, don't look that up. If it starts playing <laughs> no, no, while no, no. that microphone is no, 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 on. No, no, no. no. I just wanted a visual. No, he, he, was, he, was, uh, he was about to get in that money bag, yo. No, no. Cause you know he 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 get he get your car and get it no. and it get repossessed. I made a mistake. That, that was- <laughs> he didn't she said he didn't take it. You didn't what? Oh my bad. <laughs> I'm kind of already like that. Oh my bad. But, <laughs> but I didn't say it. Kirsten as, said it. As we wrap this up, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. Um, so. God, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> so we wrap this up. Uh, so we tend to like to do this thing with um, people as kind of put themselves in a mind fra- frame of them winning an Oscar. You've done a project. It's oh, been we haven't done this in a while. I know, I know. It's been, you know, um, you win an Oscar for this project and you're giving your Oscar speech. What is your Oscar speech? I don't know. <sighs> I, I don't know. I think I would be too, like, shocked, honestly. I don't know. I, I think I would just thank everybody who supported me and thank my family for having always invested in me. Um, and I would thank my very first fiance who said, we're going to make a web series so that you can be okay. I would, she would talk to me now, but I would thank her. <laughs> <laughs> because without her, I would have never, ever have the courage to like do this kind of thing so I would definitely want to like thank her I don't know I think I would just thank everybody so quick it sounds like you you'll stunt on your ex uh, at the Oscars I like that no, that's, yeah, not, that's, yeah. Not really, that's not I would, I would humbly that's thank not her stunt. because yeah, honestly yeah. had she never had she never said I want you to be okay try this method write something and I'm going to help you put it out she bought me my first camera and she learned editing so that she can edit a project for me. I would I would genuinely thank her because I wouldn't be I wouldn't be here today and I would have never ever ever got to a place where I could win an Oscar had I never dated her and she never was that person for me. That's what's up. So what what are you coming out with next? Like what's what's new? What are we going to explain? Um so I am I have a book um out uh it's at it's in Nelson Mandela University the students use it uh, to write their thesis um but they're waiting for my second book so i'm still writing my second book ideally it'll come out at some point um i'm also getting into the audiobook uh space because i listen to audiobooks every single day but there there are none for us by us so i'm getting into the audiobook space because i want to create a lane for lesbians or women like me um to have stories for us and uh obviously film school um once i get my life together post my divorce i'll get back into filming but right now i'm not working on filming anything because i need to just center my center my mind my heart my soul my spirit um something else but i don't remember that's a lot oh uh, uh, always a lot now you said you was in film school and you you've already done episode. yeah yeah i'm about to but i just find <laughs> find this interesting like you, you've done all these projects already. So why go to film school? Um, so I've been working with my spouse. I think we've been working together for about four years now. And there are just things that I don't do anymore. Like when I first started, I was, I was doing, but I just don't do anymore. She does them and we respect each other's lanes. You know, that's how we can work cohesively. Um, you do yourself a disservice though, when you stop learning. And for me, I didn't anticipate getting divorced, so I didn't anticipate our our company having to split. Um, I'm also realizing that there's just a lot that I stopped learning and a lot that I stopped doing, and I wanna get back into doing it so that I never have to depend on having a partner to do those things. 
And I just thought to myself, well, you know what? I still have my GI Bill, so the military will pay for it. I might as well go to film school, educate myself, and then also make that network um, of other film students because this is what I want to do with my life. And I don't want to just, you know, stay in the independent realm and keep, you know, taking shots in the dark. That's not that's not going to really help me elevate the way that I want to. So that's why. Right. All right. I, I'm that's what's forever up. the learner. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. When you hear on TMZ when she's on that big set and she's firing big, act, <laughs> big time actors, they should have listened yeah. to this podcast first so they know what she's capable of. <laughs> so she has no problem firing everybody. Like, everybody. You guys act like you never fired anybody before. No, no, not like that. Like not like that. Not like no, that. Not like that. You emptied the clip. No, like, no, I'm. I'm, I'm I've stepped on set and probably got angry or something like that, but somebody else would see that I'm getting intense and they would step in, you know. But I've never fired anybody. Not anymore. I think we're just gonna let that no. happen. No, just don't so do, you no, can, don't do that. You don't do have that. A, have a, You've never don't. fired anybody. No, 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 no. None of you guys have ever fired anybody. Um, uh-uh. Not I have, but I, like, I was okay. Okay, I'll take that back. I've, I've, I don't know what it's called. It might not be called firing, but I've let people go. But it's kind of like I, I would ghost them. Like you that's know. kind of more of what I did. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, well, oh, that can't be worse. <laughs> well, I, now I, I have, I have let go of clients. Because they, they, they weren't doing like what they were supposed to be doing. I've done that. Uh, when I was in the military, I've got people out of positions. That's not necessarily Ooh, like what, quite what branch? A, Air Force. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like, that's like the same time. That's the same time she did that to me. She did that to me twice. I was like, oh, man. Man, hold on. All right, all right. So, go, go, go. So. <laughs> Yeah, we, we definitely oh should. We definitely should end this now. Uh, Wait, Lacey, you, you, can, oh. you gonna end it like that? Yes. That's, that's <laughs> it. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness, Kevin! Don't do him like that. No, 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 no. I do me like that. <laughs> whatever. No, I'm whatever. No, 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 no. See, see what you do. You just glare past it. You glance past it. Look, now we, now we holding it here. Now it's extra awkward. <laughs> now, it's, now it's extra awkward. I, I was gonna like, say yeah. something else. The I, Get no, it away I was from gonna, me. I'm you just going to quickly yeah. end it. No, so but you were quick. Make it a quick look, shot. Look, 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 look. Now, the, that was you, the last thing no. that people were going to hear. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, instead of now, the last thing we're going to hear is VA be like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we good. We good though. We good though. We good though. We good though. I don't forget now. Just end it. <laughs> so, Lacey, Lacey, Lacey we want to thank you for coming on here and telling your story and all the other good stuff. You know what I'm saying? You've given us plenty. You've given us a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. We have laughed and learned. You Just know. you know, we're we're a good crew. So if you ever, when you start back filming, and if you ever come to Nashville, we you won't have to fire us. I'm just letting you know that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 um, politely scared of you. Uh, I, I'm gonna no. use my chain. I'm gonna use my chain of command. <laughs> I, I, just, I just want you to know that I'm gonna use my. I'm gonna be. I'll be very very polite, <laughs> and I'm gonna use my chain of command. <laughs> we'll show up on time. Even Kevin will. Kevin Absolutely. will show up on time. I'm Absolutely. trying to tell you. Uh, and on that note. <laughs> I listened to your guys' episodes and I was like, "Oh, this is going to be great!" And you guys did not disappoint. You guys, are great. I, that, that's we, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Now so that's much. how we're going to end you. it. That's, that's how we. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's what's up right there. I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you once I again. Love that you guys are doing this. Thank, Thank you. Oh. And that is a wrap. <laughs>